And so welcome to our first, well, it's not our first live worship service, but we're gearing up for uh, our live worship services to be broadcast at the same time. So we have technical uh, things that we're working out. So if we disappear, uh, bear with us. Hopefully we'll come back. We have no idea. Um, <clears throat> I just want to say that um, I'm glad that you have found us and that you're willing to give us a shot. And uh, I hope that this will be a worshipful experience for you. Let us uh, pray. Wonderful God, we come to you today with heavy hearts. There's so much going on in the world, in our lives. Help us to focus on you, to focus on your love. Give us the patience to work with and love each other in the midst of this difficult time. We thank you for fathers. We thank you for the positive influences that they have had in our lives. And we thank you for their love. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I've just realized that the call to worship is not posted on the Facebook page. So if you were going to follow along like you used to, today it's not going to happen, I'm afraid. But here is the call to worship. Our God cares for us completely, like a loving parent. Our God offers us abundant life through the Christ. In Christ, we are fully alive in God. Come, let us worship God. Now, we're going to give... A uh, couple of songs to try and see how that goes. So I'm going to step out of the screen so I can grab my. next song is going to be Majesty. Oh, 
us here for a second because I really think you guys need to be up here if you can't hear the music <clears throat> which is fine our next song is going to be number 91 in the blue book and that is in moments like these, in moments like these thank you Aaron <clears throat> That's track number six. No. <laughs> yes. All right, here we go. Thank you, Aaron and Carolyn, for your assistance with our songs today as we're trying to work out the uh, technical issues with our music. Uh, we do not have an accompanist with us today. <clears throat> that will change everything uh, starting on the 5th. It is time for us to have a moment of confession. In our Christian walk, we talk about sin. We find it all through the Bible. A sin is defined in many different ways, but it can be detrimental to our faithfulness and love. Let us confess together. Jesus Christ, the crucified, send your Holy Spirit to help us confess and truly repent of our sins. We turn against one another. We fail to care for the weak and poor among us. We pay no heed to the cries of the powerless. We see your Holy Spirit in all around us, but don't recognize it. Forgive us, merciful God. Help us find ourselves holy in Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. God, <clears throat> who loves us, does not abandon or forsake us. Our Savior hears and answers when we cry out from our crisis. The risen Christ sets us free. Hear the good news. We are in the kingdom of God. Through the Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. hallelujah. We, we are, are forgiven. forgiven. Amen. And now we will sing our song of response, if I can find it. Uh, This should be it. Glory to God, whose goodness shines on me and to the sun whose grace has pardoned me 
and to the Spirit, whose love has set me free, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen. World without end, without end, amen. World without end, without end, amen. World without end, without end, amen. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, amen. Ah, oh, wonderful. <clears throat> now, join me, if you can, in the prayer for illumination. O oh God, you have the power to make our lives a place of renewal. Help us to hear you and entrust ourselves completely to you for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now our scripture lessons this morning will be brought to us by Aaron Bamer. Aaron, you're going to want to use this mouse to scroll. I might just bring up the paper. <laughs> yes, you might. Either way is fine. We'll see. Ooh, that was way too far. Um, so our first scripture reading is from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died in sin, in sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Our second scripture reading comes from Matthew, chapter 10, verses 24 to 39. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops, and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, and not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father? But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not. Therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. But whoever ever denies me before men, I also will deny before my father who is in heaven. Do not think that... I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against his mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to let the pastor read the sermon. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Fine. <clears throat> I 
On this Father's Day, <clears throat> looking at our lectionary verses, I thought, oh no, how do I turn this into a Father's Day sermon? Um, and uh, we'll have to see how that shakes out. Um, but the title of my sermon is Lose Your Life in Service to Others. Now, I don't know if your experience is similar to mine, but when I was young, I was encouraged to do or be anything I wanted to when I grew up. Now, you might remember that I toyed with the idea of being a cowboy, an astronaut, and a chef. These were wonderful dreams, but it was not how things worked out. One of my later dreams was to be a father, and I can't recall if it was because I loved my dad so much or if I enjoyed caring for my younger siblings. Being a father has been one of the most enjoyable and rewarding experiences in my life. However, our culture never really encouraged me or possibly you, to think of being a father as a positive activity or the type of thing that real men do. Yet, being a father is one of the most important jobs that any man will ever do. Being a father is integral to the formation of community and the establishing of healthy families. Our faith tradition has embraced the idea of father to the point of depicting God as father. But, as you know, not all fathers are the same. In our scripture lesson this morning, I want to look at our last verse from Matthew 10. <clears throat> as you recall, Jesus has sent out the 12 disciples at the beginning of chapter 10, and he warns them that their work is going to be countercultural. They are going to have difficult days ahead if they remain faithful to their calling. What is that calling? Jesus sends them out to share the good news that God's kingdom is at hand or close. The realm of God is closer than most folks think. In fact, we can't escape it. God is everywhere and in everything. This is the calling of the 12 disciples. As they go, he reminds them to be humble and try not to get caught up in the social contests that are happening all around them. He suggests that when we do compete with our neighbors, we all lose. So at the beginning of our lesson, he says, don't try greater than your teacher. I think that Jesus is speaking to men here, and he's talking about the way that our culture places expectations on males that seem to manifest in very difficult decisions. Big boy, don't cry. Don't be a sissy. That's woman's work. He's reminding them that even though they have the power to do whatever they want, they need to view the world through a larger lens. After all, who is our teacher? Are we not taught by our mothers and aunts and grandmothers? Do we not find that we learn most of the compassion and caring from the women in our lives? Jesus may be saying that men need to emulate our teachers to be like them in all that we do. Have you ever thought to yourself, man, I never get anything for myself. I should treat myself to something nice. Perhaps this has happened to you. It's happened to me. And I think to myself that it would be a treat to just take a few days off and go camping. You know, get away from it all. Just me and nature. Heck, maybe even take a couple of the guys along. It's not a bad idea and not the sort of thing that would be wrong but it turns out that I should have been looking through a larger lens. It turns out that the trip is so much better if wives and children come along too. It turns out that we are all better in community. Jesus warns us against being selfish in our decision making. He suggests that we need to humble ourselves because 
backroom agreements and deals in which we are the only one to benefit will be revealed as part of what separates us from our communities. My whole life, I've wondered and struggled with the idea in verse 39, which says, whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Just like the camping trip, if I had gone by myself or just a couple of friends, I would have felt like I was finding my life. I was seizing the day, doing whatever I wanted to do. I would have had a good time, but I would have been sacrificing the better part of my life, being in community. But what about the he who loses his life for my sake will find it? What is the sake of Christ? What does for my sake mean? I think it's helpful to start with the idea that the my sake is the body of Christ. When we think about my sake, forgive me a second, I lost my place here. It's not on there. Yeah, I made additions after I posted this. The body of Christ can mean different things in different circumstances. Sometimes it means the congregation of our particular church. And sometimes it means all Christians all over the world. And sometimes it means my family and the people that I live with. To lose our life doesn't have anything to do with sacrificing our joy for some religious teaching. To lose one's life means to prioritize the needs of the many before the desires of the one. It's a way of saying that when we lose ourselves in the service to the body of Christ, the church, the community, we will find ourselves living fuller lives. Being a father is often a thankless job. It's full of pitfalls and There is often no clear way forward. Sometimes you're darned if you do and you're darned if you don't. Fatherhood is a journey in which we grow. We learn with on-the-job training. Thank a father today for their being there. Thank a father for being in your life, whether they are your biological father or not. And I would offer that we need to forgive fathers as they are human and they try to do the best that they can. And we all make mistakes along the way. In our busy lives, especially in this difficult pandemic, we need to see through a larger lens. We need to open ourselves to the possibility that we are better together. Fathers help us expand our horizons They help us see life in different ways. We all get lost along the way. Then we discover a way forward that's natural. When we get lost in the service of the body of Christ, we find life to be abundant and fulfilling. Thank you, fathers, for being willing to give up some of your own desires and dreams so that we can be the body of Christ together. Amen. Our next song is going to be out of the purple book, if you're following along. And it's going to be track number one. As I cue us up, we'll see if we can get that going. Do you want this on? It is on. Okay, great. I'm going to step out to get my hymn book. Patient and brave and true, 
who toiled and fought and lived and died for the Lord they loved and knew. And one was a doctor, and one was a queen, and one was a shepherdess on the green. They were all of them saints of God, and I mean God helping to be one too. They loved their Lord so dear, so dear, and God's love made them strong. And they followed the right for Jesus' sake, the whole of their good lives long. And one was a soldier, and one was a priest, and one was slain by a fierce wild beast. And there's not any reason, no, not the least, why I should be one too. They lived not only in ages past, there are hundreds of thousands still. The world is bright with the joy of saints who love to do Jesus will. You can meet them in school, or in lanes, or at sea, in church, or in trains, or in shops, or at tea. For the saints of God are just folk like me, and I mean to be one too. Okay, that went terribly awry at the end. <laughs> <laughs>